Hey Bo, it's Sam. It's about quarter of 11 on Tuesday and just wanted to touch base, um, see how you're doing, how everything's going after the craziness of last week. Just give me a call back whenever you get this. I'm around all day. Thanks, bye. We're gonna have a busy week this week. Back and forth, I mean, a day down to Stonington, a day to Bar Harbor, a day down to Portland. You do that three or four times a week and it starts to add up. Hey, Sam. Hey, Bo. How you doing? Good, how you been? Very, very good. Long time, man. Long time, too yeah. long. Sales are very, very strong. We're a lobster buying station and we have 35 lobster boats in our harbor. All these lobstermen are independent operators. They have their own boats, their own licenses. We provide them with a mooring. We provide them with bait. We provide them with fuel, whether it's gasoline or diesel. And most importantly, we provide them every day with a ready market for their seafood, no matter what. My plan is to put solar, as I said, down in our field on Route 32 and PowerShare here. It's solar power. Once there's solar power, that's, that's, that's the game. We can power our local delivery trucks. We can power our outboards. We can power our coolers, our pumps in our lobster tank. We can power everything without, you know, one puff of smoke. I, I think one of the great things that we can do for you, Bo, is as you're planning this, uh, we've seen great success with connecting our Luke's to uh, Efficiency Main Trust and their right. efficiency programs. Tapping into these state programs, I think, is, is one great opportunity to help kind of set the course uh, for, this, for this village. The Island Institute is a community development organization. In many ways, I feel like we're a connector. We're a cheerleader, we're a pit crew to support communities that are grappling with change change is coming. It is here on the coast of Maine. And I think we're really trying to position the organization to be a partner to communities in grappling with that change. If you look at the seafood sector in Maine, it is a heavy energy user. It is so reliant upon energy in a variety of sources, in particular diesel fuel uh, for its operations, that it represents a great opportunity to make advancements towards the state's climate action plan and reducing greenhouse gas emissions in what is probably the most important industry on the coast of Maine. We were a vertically integrated lobster and other seafood company. So we buy seafood directly from fishermen. We handle it all the way to our processing production facility where we cook it, pick it, pack it, and then send it out to our own customers. And that sort of direct connection, that removing of the middlemen is really how we guarantee traceability, quality, and sustainability. Proper freezing and cooling at the exact right temperature is really critical to maintaining the quality of our product. That That's what we stand on, that's our lifeblood. There is some elegantly simple technology to make operations much more energy efficient. An example is the phase change material pilot that we have going on down in our industrial freezer in Saco. You basically take pallet racks and you just hang a bunch of what look like your old lunchbox gel packs in that empty space. Your freezer actually charges those up, freezes them real cold at off peak times. And then when your grid hits peak hours, your freezer just shuts off and you hold that exact same super low temperature just by the cooling power of those gel packs. It saves a ton of money because they're no longer paying these super high prices at peak times. So being able to go in there and actually make that incredibly important process more efficient and less expensive is a huge win. But all these three we do use for rentals. But this is the one I kind of think is applicable to the working waterfront. So let me turn this on so you can hear how quiet it is. So that's on. <laughs> Main Electric Boat Company, we're selling boats, we're renting boats, we're doing conversions, we're selling just motors, we're selling batteries. I believe we're already to the point where we are kind of the, the center of electric propulsion in Maine, and it's, it's a thing that we kind of want to be synonymous with that. Well, that's probably a 225, 200 on that? Something like that. So you're, you're already talking about those motors yeah. could be replaced with electric engines. And we're already there. 
just imagine the harbor here in 10 years time much quieter with all of those engines replaced with electric outboards and i just think it's so cool how small the motors are that's it that's the motor that's the motor <laughs> That's not braking, it's super efficient. They kind of said to, to hell with the weight. And I think that's the approach that it's gonna take when we start talking about electric engines on fishing boats and things like that. Yeah. Like, doesn't need to be light, just needs to be rugged and be able to work all the time and be incredibly efficient. Yeah. All it takes is one boat like that out in a harbor to get people talking and seeing that it works on the water for others to follow suit. One of the barriers to implementing these climate friendly changes is just the pure cost. It's all well and good to say, this is going to save you money over time. But that doesn't necessarily mean I have the 10, 20, 30, $40,000 right now up front to implement this change. Business owners, folks working on the water, they're really focused on doing what they do day in and day out. A lot of the Island Institute's work is making sure that people understand resources exist. We help connect them to those resources. There are huge opportunities to chip away at the greenhouse gas footprint of this sector by focusing on more energy efficient solutions on the dock, shifting to electric outboards for some of the skiffs that people use around the harbors, putting up solar panels either on your property or on your working waterfront building itself. And at the Island Institute, we connect folks to the resources that they need to make some of these decisions for their business and help them chart their own clean energy pathway. Not just because it's good for the environment, because it's good for their business. Hello, Father. <laughs> How you doing? Pleasure. How many traps are you going to fish this year? I'm going to shoot for every one I got, I think, this year. I've got to try and push 300. Yeah. But we'll see. We'll see, <laughs> we'll see, see if I've got 300 worth fishing. Yeah. My grandfather almost didn't purchase this because he didn't know a thing about how to run a lobster wharf and didn't recognize the long-term value that it may represent been privileged to grow up in this area and grow up on this property and grow up around uh, the fishing community here um, since I was little. And I think that's part of the reason why I'm, I'm doing what I'm doing today. This is, all can be really hard and it can be really uncomfortable. The Gulf of Maine is, is warming. It's the volatility that we worry about. We do need to make some sacrifices we do need to do some hard things. We've got to generate a lot more clean electricity. We've got to move it from where we generate it to where people need to use it. There's more and more technology that's being incorporated into this world in a way that could help lead to a decarbonized coast of Maine. What I love about Maine is there is a culture of personal responsibility and accountability and adaptability. What the Island Institute is, is trying to support is ways to sort of minimize the social disruption of some of this change. I like to think that I'm supporting my son's ability to enter the fishery someday. There are going to be differences. There are going to be changes. But hopefully he's still able to fish in a resilient fishery that's going to support Maine's coastal economy. 